All right, welcome to A Friday Reads, where I talk about what I read, what I'm reading, what I hope to get to next. And I was planning to film this way earlier today, but uh, you know how like life just sometimes happens? Like I'm not depressed and we fixed the problem, but uh, had a bit of a sewage backup in the house. And so luckily the town, like you call them, I had someone out within like an hour. It was all covered. It's fixed now, but it was just one of those that wasn't on my to-do list today. So what can I move around? <laughs> and this is one of those things. So here I am really wanting lunch, but I want to film this first. So I want to film this. I'm going to go eat lunch and it's going to be fantastic. Okay. So it's been a minute since I've checked in with you guys. Cause I checked in way early to go on my trip. And then I read on my trip and it's, it's exciting. I don't know how many things I've finished. I think four, I think I'm in the middle of one or two things. And I don't know for sure what I'm going to read next. And I have like quite a substantial book haul to show you guys. If you don't know, I don't like make book haul videos. I just usually throw them in here because normally I just get like one or two books at a time. And uh, I was in Boston last week. Okay. And I missed the Brookline Booksmith a lot. So I went crazy and I bought four books. <laughs> and that's in addition to three books I already bought to be delivered. And then one book I got as an arc. So we have a fun book haul to go through at the end of this. All of the things I'm very excited to read. So that also makes my like, what am I picking up next section? Like in my head still in, very much in flux, but things I have finished. First off, I did finish to like the lightning, which yeah, I remember when I last checked in, I was saying, I feel a little slumpy and then the end of the book happened. And yeah, yeah, I, I need to be picking up the next book soon. I don't know if I'll just wait till next month. I don't know if I'll do it at the end of this month, but this was super fun and I need the second book now. And I now have the second book, um, but I didn't have the second book when I was on my trip. So this was just so fun. Um, everything I've been saying lately in my other videos, so I, I won't go into too much detail here, but I'm having a blast and it's still holding true that people who are like vibing with this vibe and people who don't, it doesn't usually seem to convince people by the end that they like really love it. Although we have had like a few people who are like, I'll try the second book, you know, but for the most part, it's fairly polarizing and really not for me or really for me kind of camps. I just, oh, this was so much fun, so much fun. All right. Another thing that I finished just this morning, and I'll just talk about it real quick because like, my, my thoughts on this book are not surprising. That's Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. <sighs> this was my main like audiobook this week. And the main reason I like pushed to finish it is like it was literally due within like two hours and I still had like two hours of the book left. <laughs> and I was enjoying the audiobook, so I wanted to finish listening to it. Although like this isn't a huge deal, <laughs> but the audiobook is based off the first printing of Words of Radiance and Sanderson did a pretty big rewrite for a specific scene at the end of the book. So, I mean, I say big rewrite, like it's only important if you're someone who's like very into dissecting character motivations and you're like, that's so out of character. Why did that character do that? And I'm like, well, Sanderson also thought it was out of character and he rewrote the scene. Um, <laughs> but that scene is only in like new printings of the hardback, paperback and ebook. The audiobook is still based off that original printing. And it's really not a big deal, but I was immersion reading this morning and I'm like, this is really like, it's more than just like changing of a word. It's like, whole sentences are removed, added, rearranged. Um, so just like, I guess know that if you like the audiobook route, it was really fun listening to the audiobook. I had a good time with it. The books are so long, but, and like there are things that happened in this book that I thought happened in later books. <laughs> I really can't keep track of what happens where at all. Like there are certain scenes that are just so iconic in Words of Radiance. Like oh, I was in the car, we were driving back and I was at this scene that is in, um, I believe it's at the end of part three if you have read Words of Radiance. And it's a scene that involves Kaladin and Adolin. I'll just leave it vague like that. And even though I know exactly how that scene's gonna go down, how it's gonna play out, what are the consequences, I, my heart rate, every time I read that scene, it's so epic, it's so good. Uh, and I still think Sanderson could have committed to a throuple and I would have been really happy, <laughs> would have been really happy. Anyways, um, I had a lot of fun reading Words of Radiance. That was a blast. I still need to read Edge Dancer before whenever we do our live show, but I'll probably do that just closer to that because it's not as fun for me. Like, it's not bad. I think it's kind of important because it's like our big insight into um, one of the orders of the Radiance, I believe. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Um, or maybe that's an Oathbringer. Again, I don't know where things are. Yeah, no, maybe that's just an Oathbringer. <laughs> And this one's just about lift. I don't know. Anyways, but I should like edge dancer more because according to Sanderson's quiz, I am an edge dancer, which makes sense because I would want to have the powers of regrowth and like basically frictionless surfaces. That sounds super fun because I'm always like 50, 50 if I'm wind runner or edge dancer. And I just never feel like a wind runner. I just don't, I don't vibe with that. Anyways, to not devolve into like 
your whole personality is random things in fantasy worlds. Uh, another book that I picked up and finished it and I haven't talked to you guys at all about my thoughts is The Tainted Cup, which I do have a physical copy of. Um, I was checking out a new, well, it's not a new local indie, but it's new to me. Um, it's in Chagrin Falls, if you know the area in Ohio. They have a bookstore um, called Fireside, I think. And I saw this in the wild and I was like, I didn't know the hardcover is like naked. And that's really cool. Um, unfortunately, like, I mean, I liked this book. I thought it was really cool. And we'll kind of get into that a little bit. And I am going to do like make my new release, recent release roundups with more thoughts. So I'll be kind of vague here. But I will say of all of the Robert Jackson Bennett I read, this is my least favorite. And of course, it's the one I own. <laughs> like I like Foundry Side more. I like the city, the Divine Cities more. Like this was still good. And the world is very interesting. And I really hope we get to unpack that more in later books. Um, but it was so mystery driven which is the whole point of the book. The book did what it wanted to do well. And for a mystery book, I liked it more than most mystery books, but I'm just not a, a mystery reader. And so this is another Watson Holmes style mystery. We have two people who work together for investigating and they both have very different personalities. One of them is like a genius savant, you know, that sort of thing. And I usually only like that dynamic when I like their relationship with each other and their relationship wasn't bad and I was enjoying it when they interacted with each other but they didn't interact with each other enough um but the world is really cool and unsettling unsettling the atmosphere the vibes are vibing um so yeah I'll talk about this more in future videos I had a good time with it I did not love it as much as I wanted to love it I do like the production of the book so and I'm excited to read more in the series like I do want to read more this is like kind of a complete thought though. So if you're over someone who's just like, oh, I don't like cliffhangers. There's not really a cliffhanger in here. The mystery that is introduced here is resolved by the end. And I just wish I knew more about the world because the world is so interesting. <laughs> like it's just really weird. So it was a fun place to like explore. I just like wish it wasn't a mystery, which the author really wanted it to be a mystery. So like that's, you know, he accomplished his goal, you know? All right, and the next one is The Clockwork Boys by T. King Fisher, and you got, it, it's so cute. So like, I know for a fact, because I edited it and I said it and I made sure to say it, because I'm like, okay, I know everyone's always like, you read The Clockwork Boys, make sure you have Wonder Engine on hand. And like, if I say in the video, don't worry guys, I'm gonna read Wonder Engine, people won't keep reminding me. No, people keep reminding me. <laughs> it's like, I know, I know, I'm going, I have Wonder Engine, I'm already started it, but I finished Clockwork Boys and I read it all across upstate New York. And I think, I really do need to just plan when I read Teak and Fisher so I can just like really sit with it like and read it all in one go because I do think that's when it works best for me when I just have like two to three days where like that's the only thing I'm reading and I have a lot of reading time because right now I think Wonder Engine's suffering because it wasn't ever my priority read since I've started it and I should have finished it by now and there's no issue with it when I'm picking it up but it's just too um, stuttered for me and part of that is I'm only reading it before bed because that's just how my physical reading time has been going lately. But Clockwork Boys, I really like, and maybe on popular opinion, I do not think it's so aggressively not one book, <laughs> if that makes sense. If you don't know this duology, people are always like, it's basically one book split in two, which like, yes, to some extent, if we're talking about the entire goal of the series, it's split in two, sure. But isn't that almost every trilogy or duology is like, like, like Mistborn, there is a goal for the entire trilogy and it's split into three parts. And like, for some extent, I understand what people are saying. Mistborn, very much a complete thought. And some people do treat it like a standalone. I could see a lot of people not being able to stop after Clockwork Boys. And I think that's the inherent difference. But for, for the most part, the first book is about these people forming their party to go on a quest to get to a place. And then the second book is about accomplishing their task at the place that they got to. So in my head, I'm like, this that seems like a very normal place. <laughs> to stop the story. And actually there were some interesting character arcs that happened within the first book. So I felt way more satisfied than I think the average person, but I was warned excessively about how much this first book wasn't gonna satisfy me. So I think that also plays into it. Um, I really liked the first book. I think it really benefited from me reading it all in one go. Like essentially, like I read it over 24 to 48 hours. Um, I'm just, I'm enjoying all the characters. I will say Slate, um, so our main character Slate, she is a forger who is being told that she has to accomplish this impossible task or she'll be killed. And so she has to get this gang of people together. And one of the people she gets is this like disgraced paladin who was possessed by a demon. Um, and he's really cool. And there's obviously like tension and a romance between them. And they're both adults. Like she's been in a marriage before and she's just very, she's got like sometimes a chip on her shoulder. Like sometimes she's so rational and makes sense. And then other times it's like, she's mad that the paladin acted like a paladin. And I'm like, Okay, like, so I think sometimes like she's acting a little weird and it feels 
almost not in character sometimes. Because I don't mind when characters get in their own way if it's in character. But, like, I see her being so rational and so reasonable with so many other people. But with this person, she's just, like, trying to get in her own way. And I can't tell if it's the character or if it's just the books deciding I'm not allowed the romance to happen yet. You know? Um, so that's, like, the only thing that, like, I don't love as much as other T. Kingfisher, like, romances that I've had. But this world, like, something I really love about it is there's the whimsy of T. Kingfisher, the banter, the whimsy, the romance. This world is so freaking dark. <laughs> so that dichotomy works really well for me. Um, like, this world has this disease. And on top of that, it has these, like, the clockwork boys that are terrifying individual siege engines, and there's war. And it's just when we sit in those scenes for, like, even a second, I, it's just really cool. I really like the dichotomy. And then we had, like, this horror scene in a forest. I really like that. So it's really delivering what I like, which is a bit of humor and whimsy combined with dark, unsettling world building. So that's working really well. So I want to finish it soon. I just haven't sat down and read. And this morning I was going to read but then we had the sewer problem. And so here I am. So those are the things I finished. And I've already kind of talked about Wonder Engine while talking about Clockwork Boys. I just haven't finished it yet. I don't know how the arc ends. Yeah, that is, that's just going. Um, I don't know what I'm going to read yet next. I think my audiobook is going to be The Broken Kingdoms because I told Laura we should start buddy reading it and I wanted to finish Words of Radiance first. So I think this is, this is coming up. This is my favorite in the Inheritance Trilogy. This is my UK copy, which is why it's all shiny. I have my US copy on the shelf because I have two copies of this for reasons I don't understand. But Ore is in this one. She's a blind artist and I really like her. Um, I really like, like, I like the reveals about the world in this one. I remember I really like the character interactions between Ore and like, what does it say on the back of the book? She basically stumbles upon this unknown individual. Yeah, this homeless man and they form a bond. And also you learn more about this homeless man. And I really like that. So, yeah, and I think this takes place maybe nine to ten years after the events of the first book, potentially. So, I really like also seeing a world evolve over time in a series. My physical read after I finish Wonder Engines might probably be The Angel of Indian Lake. This is the third book in the Indian Lake trilogy. Is that what it's called? I don't know if it's written anywhere. I have no clue. But... This follows Don't Fear the Reaper and My Heart is a Chainsaw and has Jay Daniels and I'm really excited and I feel like I need a horror this month and I haven't read a horror yet. Like I've read things with unsettling imagery like The Tainted Cup and Clockwork Boys both have horror elements but this is just like slasher horror. So I think I would really like that. Um, but otherwise, I mean, we'll go through my book haul because any of these things could happen. Any of the things that I got could happen. Um, I mean, okay, this one's the arc I got. This one I might not read right away. It doesn't come out to July and I don't think I'm itching for it right now but it's the West Passage. Um, it looks really pretty. And one thing that made me want to like um, request it is it's illustrated. I'm trying to find some of the illustrations. So the author did illustrations themselves. I don't know what they mean or anything like that. Um, but it looks really pretty. Like for an arc, I'm just like, this is really pretty. I think it's Indian or South Asian. I don't know specifically because I haven't like read much about it. But the ladies reign, the palace rots, the beast rises. And it says, journey down the crumbling corridors of the West Passage, a delightful, mysterious, and visionary fantasy unlike anything you've read before. So yeah, I don't know much about it, but I want to read it. Um, always looking for non-Western fantasy that speaks to me. And like, it's just, this is so pretty. So hopefully I read that in the near future. I bought the rest of the Terra Ignota series. <laughs> so here we are. The next one I would read is Seven Surrenders. So this could happen soon it, it could happen it definitely it definitely could um what's interesting so this book the first book and the last book this is the last book all of like the same covers oh this is the bible pages i hate the bible pages but this third book is a weird different type of cover and feel like you can't tell visually but it's got this different type of cover so that's just, just odd to me why Tor would choose to do that. Um, so this is the third one so i got all of those because you know i was obsessed and i was like well i need the rest of them and now I have them. And now my Brookline Booksmith haul. Oh, it makes me so happy. I like was only gonna get three. I'm sorry if you're getting the bag, but then I was like, I gotta treat myself. So one of them I already read and I just have it for my um, T. Kingfisher collection. And that's uh, What Feasts at Night. So I just have it because like down here I have What Moves the Dead. Here, I'll get it out. And they're gonna look so pretty next to each other. Oh yeah, look at them, look at them. And like um, the production of these novellas is always so good. So it always has like an embossed thing here. It always has some really pretty art. And like, I know they're overpriced, but I, I, I treated myself. So I got What Feasts at Night to go with my What Moves the Dead. 
I got Chain Gang All Stars because the paperback was out and I, I don't know, it's, this cover has been speaking to me. I kept telling myself, read Friday Black first. Is that what it's called? I think it's Friday Black. Yeah, I'm looking over at my TBR because that's the short story collection by this author. And I just bought it anyway. It's just, I, this is like a literary science fiction dystopian type book, I believe about prison systems. Um, and I read like the first page and I was like, yeah, I wanna read this. Um, fair warning, I think I only bought depressing books accidentally. <laughs> So, cause this is not lighthearted. And then I got Womb City, which is definitely not gonna be lighthearted because I have read three short stories by this author and they are never happy. They are always dark and unsettling and gory. And this doesn't look like it's gonna be a happy time, right? <laughs> I think it's about body autonomy and you know, I think it takes place in Botswana. Am I making that up? I have no clue. Yeah, it's, um, it takes place in Botswana, which is cool. I haven't read anything that's been specifically set there outside of short stories. And then I got Those Beyond the Wall by Makia Johnson, which like the first book was definitely had some commentary, but I wouldn't call that book like depressing. But this one, like the beginning of it, there's like an author's note about anger and protests. And so this feels like it's going to be a rage science fiction book, but I'm excited for it. Um, apparently it does have characters from the first book, but it takes place like 10 years in the future or something like that. That's what I've been told in some videos, but I now have this, um, you guys can't see it, but over here is my first copy of Space Between Worlds. The only thing I don't like is like they changed the, this is glossier, so it's not gonna be the same texture. Ooh, what's the back say? I like hearing stories. I'm not great at telling them and I don't like doing things I'm not good at, but I don't have a choice. Too many of the other tellers are dead and they're waiting for me to, to say their part. We don't like witnesses in Ashtown, but I guess that's what I am now. And that's actually, I read the first page of the paragraph. That's like the first lines of the book. So I wanna know what the story is in here. So this is of all the books I just showed you, the one that I'm most likely to pick up because I wanna pick up a new release because then I'll have three books to do my new release roundup. So it's either this or The Angel of the Lake. And if I guess you have strong opinions about which one I might for sure pick up next, feel free to sound off in the comments and I might listen and I might ignore you, I don't know. Um, but so I think those are two, the two most likely physical reads that I have next. Um, and I don't know what I'm, I'm doing, honestly. I'm just existing. I wanna play video games. I don't have time and I'm, I don't know. This week just has gotten away from me, <laughs> for lack of a better word. But I did see Dune this week and I think I am gonna make a video on my Dune thoughts eventually. Like, I don't know if anyone really needs them, but I made a video on Dune part one. The, what's interesting is for the Dune part one video, I had read the book fairly recently and this time I did not reread the book but I definitely like the movie more. That's, I guess, the too long didn't watch, didn't make that other video. I like this one more. And I think part of that is because I liked the second half of the Dune book less. So I knew that it could be true to the source, source material, but be more interesting to me. And it's, that's definitely what happened. So I saw Dune and I went to Zumba this week and that was fun. I miss Zumba, so that was a good time. That was a good time. So I, I think my time is slipping away and it's mostly being used well. There are just little things that keep getting in the way, like, you know, pipes that need to be drained and like cousins that need to be tutored and <laughs> all that stuff. Anyways, let me know what you're reading, doing, watching this weekend. Um, and if you just want to leave an emoji to let me know you're here. Oh, I don't know. I have so many books around me and I have no idea what I want. Oh, I, I don't know. Um, those beyond the wall, Ash, town, cities. Let's do cities. Something like a city. Okay. And otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.